This is my Suzuki X90. I bought it in Rhode Island for 1200 bucks with the plan of driving it back to the West Coast and upgrading it at various stops along the way. It didn't go exactly to plan. Whoa! The body mount is completely gone. We're not gonna make it. Was buying this dirt cheap East Coast car a good idea? Or was this too good to be true? Today, we're gonna talk about all the lessons I learned along the way on this 4,000 mile trip across America. I'm Henry, welcome to Donut. If you're wondering about my face, I'm Henry. I've directed a bunch of videos you've probably seen on the channel. This concept started as a series of YouTube shorts, but some of you wanted a full-length version, so this one's for you. So I recently became obsessed with the Suzuki X90, like unhealthily obsessed. I've dreamed of owning one ever since I discovered they existed, but they go for four to $7,000 here in California. Late one night, I'm scouring the internet for cheap cars when this thing pops up. An X90 for 1200 bucks, an hour away from my hometown in Rhode Island? 1200 bucks. So I buy the thing. I'm ecstatic. I literally own my dream car. I'm on cloud nine until this book arrives in the office. Crap cars. Not only is the X90 in it, it's in the top 10 worst cars ever made. So I get a chip on my shoulder. When someone insults something you love, you go out of your way to prove them wrong. I'm gonna show the world how cool these cars can be. Here's the plan. I'm gonna drive this car across the country. I'm setting up checkpoints along the way with mods and upgrades to turn this thing into an off-road rig that you can take anywhere. When I get to LA, this thing's gonna be able to keep up with high and low truck on any trail we go on. Just you watch. I fly to Rhode Island to get this thing road ready. I refresh and flush most of the fluids, get some new tires, replace the passenger side window motor, and swap out some body pieces with some I salvaged from a Scrapyard X90 I found in Vegas. Now that it's running, I have to answer the question that everyone's wondering. How much rust is under the tip of this turd iceberg? So we get her up on the lift. Holy f This might be the worst rust I've ever seen. You might not be able to even get parts. Is it structural? That's a fuel line. Definitely keep an eye on that. So okay. if you smell gas, you'll know why. Oh, God. I could try and weld this stuff myself, but as Job says... Well, yeah. Henry, I don't know about your welding skills, <laughs> but... <laughs> now comes a part of the story where I exhaustively search for someone to help me in my small state of Rhode Island, but everyone is telling me there's no shot anyone will help me with this amount of rust. Six months? Oh, you don't do cars. You do railings. I must have called every shop in Rhode Island until I finally found one willing to work on my crusty X90, K&D Auto. Anything's fixable. That's the attitude I like to hear. We're probably gonna be looking at like maybe three to four grand anyway. Four grand? I mean, that's ballpark for where they get it. Four grand? For that, I could have just bought a completely functional, rust-free one on the West Coast. I was feeling like a complete moron. But here's the thing, I already bought the car, and I've already started shipping parts to various areas of the United States. The plan was already in action. I was in too deep. I have no choice but to fork over the four grand because I have to get this thing on the road. So the guys weld me up pretty much an entirely new rear chassis with new cross members and everything hand jammed and solid. Now, at least I can take this thing off road safely. They also fixed the brake master cylinder so I can actually stop this thing on the road. That was another thousand dollars. So now I could actually start the modifications. Mod number one, the spoiler. The X90 spoiler is cracked in half so before leaving the donut office, I grabbed the spoiler off of our wrecked Subaru curse car and popped it on the X90 and it fits surprisingly well. I even got the wing light to work. <laughs> First stop is North Carolina where we've got two parts waiting for us. So my brother and I pack up the car and hit the open road. <laughs> only for it to close on us immediately. Transmission code P0743, the torque converter clutch solenoid. Not even a few miles from home, and I think the transmission is already giving up on me. I listened to the myths about not changing the fluid in old transmissions to avoid slipping, and now I'm paying the price. I took it in to get flushed, which most people wouldn't recommend because it can dislodge debris and move it somewhere else in the transmission system where it shouldn't be, but 
I'm willing to risk it. Desperate times call for desperate measures. I have to get to North Carolina to get my hands on these upgrades. So I get a transmission flush, and a couple miles later, the code goes away. So we send it to North Carolina to install modification number two, some skid plates. These cost me 500 bucks from Rocky Road Outfitters. When replacing the gas tank, the rusty stock skid plate came with it. So if I'm gonna take this thing anywhere rocky, I'm gonna need to protect the naked gas tank. I also got a second box full of audio gear. Four JL audio speakers, a 400 watt amp, some wires, and a continental head unit. Altogether, this ran me 900 bucks. The plan was to install them in North Carolina. The only problem was... It's eight degrees. Radio today. It's freezing. When I go to fly my drone, my thumbs are so frozen that I lose control and crash into some trees. Let's get the f out of here. So we head somewhere a little warmer, Savannah. Did I mention that this is a terrible road trip car? To get the audio gear to fit in the car, we have to strap some of our gear to the trunk. There is no damn space in this car. Then again, I probably didn't have to pack two whole spare fenders in the trunk. It's hard to find any good body panels in good condition. There are only 7,000 of these cars sold in the US. So I scooped these ones up before I left Rhode Island. Extremely efficient use of space. Back to the trip. In Savannah, I show some friends the car. Where's the car? There's the car. Oh my God. This looks like it's out of Cars the Movie or something. <laughs> then get to work on the stereo system. This install is virtually the same as the one Zach did on Money Pit. So if you're interested in an in-depth install, go check out that video here. One of the challenges of doing a road trip like this is you feel the pressure of making it to your next destination so bad that you rush things and jump to conclusions. After installing the rear speakers, I moved to the passenger door panel. And it seems like the speakers are not fitting in the door divot. Thinking I don't have time to solve this problem, I just start cutting a hole in, in the, the door, door panel, panel to, to mount, mount it, it from, from the, the outside. outside. Then I crack open the other door and see the perfectly sized adapter that I forgot I removed when replacing the window motor. I finished the install with this Continental head unit. I love this thing and everyone around the office does too. It's simple, it's clean, has Bluetooth and looks period. But at least now I could drown out my massive exhaust leak as I head down to Florida to meet up with my friend Blaine to install a thousand dollar lift kit. This kit consists of a two and a half inch suspension lift, a two inch body lift for a total of four and a half inches. The suspension install is fairly easy, removing the old shocks, springs and struts and bolting in the new ones. But if you thought the rust issues were over, you've got another thing coming and that thing is more rust. As we go to remove our first body mount, the stud just breaks loose because it's so damn rusty. So we took the bumper off so we could get access to this. So we're gonna sawzall the bolt straight out because this is stripped beyond repair. We're gonna cut a little hole in here and make a new body mount. Whoa, I think that was a rat's nest. <laughs> Just got evicted. So the rear body mounts are solid. The front lift goes in, no problem. The passenger side is hanging on by a thread. So now we feel the need to make at least one more body mount to feel all right with this lift. A little grinding and fabricating and we end up with a new driver side body mount with some gorgeous weld work by Blaine. Oh, that looks awful. This is the worst job I've ever done. It's okay. And we RTV'd the rest of the body lift spacers in place, which is surprisingly what they recommend in the instructions. What these instructions don't include was a warning or solution to the bumpers not lining up after the lift. All right, so we put the two inch body lift on, but man, does that gap look awful extremely frustrating when a kit is marketed as specific to your vehicle and still makes you figure this out on your own. We did some cutting and welding to get the spacing right to lift these bumpers up two inches. So how does it drive with the kit? <laughs> it feels like I'm going 75, I'm going 45 miles an hour. Before I leave Florida, I have to hit the trails to test out our new suspension. To the trails. This trail was nothing crazy, but it allowed me to test out the new suspension and the newfound confidence with the 10 inches of clearance. As I'm taking this bad girl over this bumpy trail, I start to smell gas. Something is leaking out of the top of the tank, and I guess that's what I get for reusing some of the parts from the old tank with the new one. But the leak doesn't seem too bad, so 
This is a fix for another day. For now, it's off to Alabama for our next mod. Wheels and tires. For the Zuki, we're going for some Pro Comp white steel wheels, which ran me 350 bucks, and these 31 inch Yokohama all-terrain tires, which cost me about a thousand. All together with shipping and mounting, it costs around 1500 total. In order to get these things to fit under the car, I know I'm gonna have to do some trimming. So I mount the rear wheel and draw out an inch laterally from either side and then eyeball a nice curve with some electrical tape. I'm cutting out slats and hammering them back into the wheel well. I like this method because it feels like a cleaner finish to me than having a sharp edge. I'm doing the same method on the front, but here I'm taking off two inches and the slat and hammer method allows me to have something to connect the fender liner to when I reinstall it. There's still a lot of rubbing and Oof. I may have to trim off more later down the line, but for now, a little rubbing doesn't bother me. Before the wheels, I was getting 23, 24 miles per gallon. With the wheels, 14 miles per gallon. With a 10 gallon tank, that means I'm stopping almost every 100 miles. I left Alabama and cruised through Louisiana where I crashed for the night at a nudist colony, which I can't show you the footage of for obvious reasons, but while I was there, I replaced the EGR valve that had been giving me issues since North Carolina. These wheels completely changed the look of the car, and it's starting to look intentional and not just like some strange lifted beater. And people are starting to notice, especially when I make it to the holy mecca of Texas, Bucky's. What do you think? That's a sick car. Yeah. Thanks, man. It's weird, right? Along the way, I head to Matagorda Beach on the southeast coast of Texas. Come on, come on. Yeah. Yeah. That was sick. That was so sick. Next stop is Austin, where I have some little minions helping me install a light bar. All right, we got the lights out of the box and all wired up. Let's see if they work. Woo, those things is bright. What do you think? Fire on the stick. You heard it here first, folks, fire on the stick. This is the cheapest mod of the trip at $150, and the install is as simple as pulling the A-pillar panels, drilling a hole, bolting it up, and wiring it. However, this is not mounted correctly. Boom. Oh, <laughs> it's literally pointed at the 15-foot ceiling. How awful is that? <laughs> that is an interesting uh, choice of angle. I do like to think that some people like to point their lights high as they're going through the woods, you know, to look for owls. Yeah, I was looking for owls the whole time I was skirting through the woods. They were saying, who? Yeah. Who would drive this? <laughs> who would drive who? this? Who would drive this? I want to test out these lights, but after driving around for hours, every trail is closed. And even worse, it's windy as hell. I'm not about to set up a tent in this weather, so I gotta do the unthinkable. Sleep in the X90. This was the worst night of sleep of the whole trip. Now I'm thrown another fun challenge. In a few days, Justin is set to arrive in Sedona, Arizona for a Honda Pilot test drive event, and I wanna make it to him. So I set out to drive his way. It's about to be 12 hours of straight driving. So I keep on heading to my next pit stop, Santa Fe, New Mexico, because someone told me to check it out. What they didn't tell me is that it would be snowing. At this point, I noticed the brakes need some work and as much as I wanna do the work myself, I don't really wanna roll around in the snow in some random parking lot. So I take it in to get fixed. Get a diagnostic, some new front pads and rotors, some new plugs and a new distributor, 1500 bucks. A pretty big hit to my wallet, but at least I can stop now when I hit the trails of Sedona. There he is! What do you oh think, my Justin? goodness! This thing is intense! How's that body roll? <laughs> no, not too bad. Not Leave too it bad. to Justin to yank on everything. Of Definitely gonna need the downforce with that wing back there. <laughs> oh, yeah. maybe, maybe when you leave the trail and you're hurling down the canyon, maybe it'll help you fly. Yeah. I'm just gonna hop right over. This thing is handling this trail swimmingly. God, this thing is awesome. Justin, you want to come drive this thing? Yes. Can we, please? This thing is great. Oh my God. This trail was rated five out of 10 and I was keeping up just fine with these extremely capable pilot trail sports. The grippy tires and foot of clearance makes this car feel 
unstoppable. Feels like a death trap. <laughs> Makes me feel like I'm at home. After Sedona, I cruise down to Phoenix to Turnstile, a shop that specializes in JDM and Euro cars. They hooked me up with their fabricator, Vic, who helps me install this front armor that came all the way from Zuki Nation in Canada, which cost me 900 bucks. This thing adds much more approach angle and makes this little bubbly vehicle a little more mean, which I love. After Arizona, a girl joins me for the final leg of the trip to California and we fall in love, so that's cool. Also, we almost ran out of gas on our way to Joshua Tree, like bad. We're not gonna make it. I was really worried about being stranded in this thing in the middle of the desert with my brand new girlfriend. So in a future upgrade, I'll definitely have to rig a jerry can and fifth wheel setup in the back. We make it to a gas station just in time. And now it's time to get back to the donut office because I got more videos to make. Boost Creeps are back, baby. Brand new shirts, brand new design. We've also got posters. So if you've got a torso, a wall, or a head, we've got you covered. What if you're saying, Jane, I don't have any of those things. All I have is a bunch of random surfaces. Well, we got you covered too. Brand new sticker pack. Go to donutmedia.com, get you some. So I'm officially in Los Angeles. I made it all the way. I'm so hyped for the guys to see the car for the first time. <laughs> I bet eight of us could tip this thing over. You want to do roller protection? <laughs> no. So well, most people fly to the west coast to buy cars. Yeah, I did the opposite. Hopefully now you can see why I love this thing so much. It's incredibly fun and really capable. Since landing in LA, I've gone out with high and low truck and it kept up just fine. I did get stuck, which was fun. We used the bumper as a recovery point and winched it out with high truck, which was super sick. I love this thing, but it's far from finished. So I think maybe we'll do another round, run it back the other way. If you wanna see more of this car, check me out on socials, Hi Def The Chef. I'm gonna be posting a bunch of different videos about this car, some stuff I left out from this video, so go check it out. It feels amazing to be on camera. I love you guys, thanks. <laughs>